Welcome, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through several ways that you can use a free guitar chord chart PDF that I made just for you. I created this unique guitar chord chart for students who want to learn more about music theory with the chords that they're playing, or for songwriting, it's incredibly useful, or for playing the same song in multiple keys and learning how to do that, or also for being able to put your own spin on cover songs and make them sound unique, make them sound more like you and something that someone else hasn't done before, but with a cover song. And lastly, the big reason that I did this was so we can find and understand alternative options for chords, um, interchangeable chord options that are different, that are beautiful, that are colorful, that have um, all kinds of uh, other sounds, but that work um, just as well as the basic normal standard chords that we're used to. As far as I know, there isn't any other guitar chord chart out there like this, which is why I made it. So in this video, we're gonna go over four of the ways that you can really take advantage of using this chart because it's not normal. Like I said, it's not super straightforward. There's all kinds of ways that we can benefit from it. So um, it's totally free. It's a free PDF. You can grab it in uh, the description, the, the link that's at the top of the description there. Hope you enjoy it and find it nourishing and have some really creative, fun guitar sessions with it. So we're gonna go over those four ways to um, take advantage of it. And those four ways are one, I'm gonna show you how you can use it to find just chords that sound good together within a key, just chords that exist in a key through five different keys. Two, you can use it to study chord tones so you can really see what the actual label and spelling of the notes within chords are. This is what I don't see on any other chord charts. I write the numbers that are in the chords. You'll see what I mean. I'm gonna describe it to you and show you how you can take advantage of that. Three, I'll show you how you can use it to find alternative chord options, beautiful extended chords like I mentioned before, interchangeable chord options options instead of just using kind of the normal chords that you might be used to. And four, I just recently added a bonus page with 20 of the most common chord progressions on it. So you can look at those, find super common chord progressions, and then go and play with them by using the shapes and find even alternative chord options from those common chord progressions to make them your own. This is the 26th and final lesson in a big music theory guitar series that I did that I originally called How to Learn Guitar Chords. It starts from the very beginning of the music theory of kind of chord and harmony on the guitar and goes to very advanced concepts like chordal harmony chords that are stacked in fourths or how to make chord melodies and play melody and harmony at the same time. A lot of great stuff in there. So uh, there'll be a link in the description to that series. If you haven't watched that, it's basically like a course, like a free course on, uh, on YouTube, uh, tons of good stuff. So just kind of plugging that. And this is the final lesson for that series just to kind of top it off. <laughs> I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory and how to map out the guitar and how to do that in a really practical, hands-on way so we can have control over music, so we can express ourselves, so we can be artists, so we can really uh, you know, get, get that feeling that we want from music by filling in all the gaps. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I put out new lessons. All right, so here it is. It's called Chords with Color, and you'll see why it is called that soon with one of, one of these ways that we're going to use it. But the first way we're going to use it is just to find chords that sound good together within a key. We're going to, I mean, this is a very basic um, kind of music theory thing, but super, super useful. So this alone was kind of one of the ideas of a chord, a, a chord chart could totally do this by itself. So, you know, I have this uh, contents here, uh, table of contents, interchangeable chord options in the key of C major or A major, or, you know, major and minor. We'll go through all, all of that, how it works. You can click on these to go to that area. Um, if you're looking at this on a computer or if you print it out, that's great too. Um, on any of these pages, cause it's kind of long, it's 13 pages that you can kind of flip around to. You can always click down here on the bottom, return to table of contents and it'll take you back to the top. Um, I'm, I'm showing kind of a fuller screen view of this, uh, but of course you can, you know, look at it. Uh, you'll be looking at it more in a kind of a PDF um, size uh, way if you do that. So let me resize it here. Um, so a bunch of stuff about uh, that, that I recommend reading, but you know, I'm going through it here in, in the video. So right now we're just going to skip that. That's just talking about what am I talking about with color? What does that mean? Um, what are chord extensions, um, how to use the chart and, and whatnot. But that's what this video is for. So the first thing is just chords uh, that exist in a key. So again, this is like its own 
kind of golden piece of information right there. Um, if you don't have that down or know that, this could be super, super useful if you're either kind of studying what chords are in a song or writing your own songs or whatever. So you might know this stuff already and that's where some of the more advanced stuff down here is gonna be very cool. Uh, but we really, really wanna know this. So um, this is the basically like a scale um, but with chords, right? So this is the one chord, the two chord, the three chord. It's the chord that you can build off of the first note of the scale, the second note of the scale, the third note of the scale in a key through, you know, there's seven notes in a scale. So then therefore there are seven chords with the root um, of each chord being one of those scale notes. So this is the key of C major and A minor, which we'll talk about, you know, using it as minor in a second. Um, but if I play through these chords for you and, and demonstrate, um, I'll play that and, and demonstrate, but I also want to say these little gray notes are um, all, uh, options that don't change the chord at all, right? So if you look here, you see that uh, I have three written there, and I'm going to talk about what those mean, and that's one of the ways we want to use this in a second. It's very, very cool to do that. Um, so three, uh, it means it's a third of the chord, and this means it's the fifth of the chord. Now, if you if you play one or the other, it doesn't change the fact that it's just a complete normal C chord at all. So it's kind of cool. You can use those melodically, actually. You can put your pinky down on this five and then release it to have it be open, um, and it's just still a C chord. So you see that's over here on the uh, G chord as well. You can either have it be open or have that five. So I might show that when I demonstrate a little bit here. So here's the uh, C chord. Open E, pinky down there. So. That's kind of nice. Here's D minor, it's the two chord of the key. Any order of these chords will always sound super good together. Okay, G, and then here's that. Do you want to interchange that? Here's a little bit of melody in there, right? Very useful for finger picking too. You want to throw those um, kind of interchangeable uh, options in, in there. So every time you see a gray note, that's what that is. A minor is the sixth chord, and B diminished. This will be very rare in a lot of you know songwriting music or popular music, um, but it's it's the chord that is in the key. It's the theory of the chord that is in the key. So the this first column here, they're all just triads. They're all just triads, and we're going to talk about why I have triads and then these other chords in a second. Um, but um, but that's the first thing to do. So just to make sure you understand that. So if I go back to the table of contents here and then go to um, the next key, and I could just scroll down, but it just is kind of easier to jump to it in this way. So now it's going to say, oh, well, what if you want to play in the key of A? Okay, well, that first chord, the one chord is A major, two chord is B minor. And, this, and the way I chose these chords for the entire chart is really trying to find the closest to open string chord as possible. So there are some bar chords like this C sharp minor and the B minor, and those are just like the closest that we can get to. Um, and or, you know, I tried to make it technique wise as easy as possible um, and not having a bunch of hard, you know, crazy bar chords in there. Um, so it's quite nice in, in that uh, setting. Of course, with every chord, there are many, many ways you can play that one chord. And a lot of chord charts focus on that. And that's what this, this is different because it doesn't do that at all. Um, a lot of chord charts will say, hey, you want to play, you want to play D? Here's 12 different ways to play the exact same D chord, but with different voicings and stuff. That's very cool stuff to study. It's just not what the focus of this uh, chord chart is. Instead, I've focused on giving you um, different options that can replace that, that actually sound different. So um, I'll get to that soon, but basically if you play this D um, or the D sus, as I circled there, uh, they can function the same. You can replace them totally um, anytime. So, but basically that's the key of A. I'll scroll down now to go to, um, the key of G. So just this top row um, where it says triad is the um, just straightforward kind of what you think of as your normal chords through any key. So there's G major and then E major, right? Some of these have more bar chords than others. Okay, really good stuff to study. And then there's one more key. And it's through the keys of C, A, G, E, and D, just because those are the most 
have the most open strings in them. They're the most common keys to play around with. So here's G, A. So I'm just playing one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord. Um, so that's really one of the initial kind of purposes to use. You're ignoring everything else, that's super valuable just on its own. If you don't know just what the normal triads are through a key. So in one of the updates, I added what the relative minor key is. So let me go back to the table of contents. Every major key has a relative minor key and every minor key has a relative major key. So when you're playing in a major or minor key, they share the same key signature. They share the same um, collection of notes essentially. So um, let's go ahead and go to G major and E minor. Cause we say, Hey, what if we want to play in E minor? Okay. So what I did here, it's, it's, hard when I'm scrolling in this way, but when you look at the whole page, it'll be a little easier. Um, you'll see at the bottom here, I have minor key. I put it down there because I didn't want it to get crowd, you know, crowd things up over here. I want it to be really clear on the top that we're doing, you know, one chord, two chord. That's really something to understand first. But then the exact same chords um, down here, you can treat as minor. So all that means is you're changing the label of it. So notice this is the one chord. So the order is is out of order. If we were just talking about the minor key, I would put the one chord first and then have the two chord and three chord in that order. But since it's on the same chord chart here, I'm just showing, hey, treat this as the main chord. And then you're playing in minor, right? So um, yes, we have all these chord options up there. But um, but here's that normal kind of E minor chord. Okay, well, Yes, we have these uh, labels down here that you can look at, but I'm going to not keep scrolling back and forth because once you know that this is one, and this is actually a big kind of music theory clue, the one of the minor key is the six of the major key, and the six of the major key is the one of the minor key. But once we know that it's one, then we can just say, oh, cool. Well, that means that this is two. And that means that this is three, and this is four, and this is five, and this is six, and this is seven of the minor key. Okay, of the relative minor key. So if you focus on this minor chord a lot, um, and then you play this one, you know, that would be the, this is one, so this is seven, and this is six. And you'll see down here, it says flat seven major, flat six major. So if some of that is confusing, don't worry about it. It's just good to get exposed to this stuff. Um, and if you understand the theory of that and, and kind of have been exposed to it, but just have this as a resource to see it all in one place, that's what's really super useful. So if I play that E minor chord, and then go to D, and then C, and then back to E minor. That's one of the common chord progressions that's gonna be on the, the bonus page of this sheet that we're gonna talk about. Uh, one minor, flat seven major, flat six major, back to one minor. So that's just to show you, yep, there. if you wanna think of minor keys, then it's there as well. Whether you're writing your own songs or trying to analyze what's going on in a song that you're playing. So again, I just wanna say all of that, major, the major triads and the minor triads, or the major triads through the major key and the relative minor key, that's in five different keys on this whole chart. So if you, uh, there's two pages for each key, but we have the C major and A minor, um, the A major, F sharp minor, G major, E minor, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, five different keys of that, lots and lots of stuff to study. Even though there are 12 keys total, these are the very, very common open string keys. Uh, kind of the most common chords you'll find on the guitar are from those keys right there. So it's just putting them into the context of how do they work together and why do they work together? Okay, so the second use of this chord chart is that it shows chord tone numbers. Let's just go to any key here, go to E major and uh, C sharp minor. Um, and as you can see, and as I already mentioned, if we just look at this A chord here, well, what I have, and I'll zoom in on this, is the chord tone numbers labeled. R means root, and that is just the same as one. So I like to put the R there because it's, it's the root, but it's the same thing as one. So the root is always one. Um, so these numbers though, and this is something I haven't seen any other chord chart do this. I'm sure they're out there. I'm sure people write out chords like this all the time because it's so useful, but it's just not very, um, it's just really not what is most common. You know, if you look at a bunch of chord charts, it's going to show you usually fingering numbers instead. And I don't like to do that because um, there are so many ways you can place your left hand fingers on 
uh, any one chord. For example, this could be uh, finger one, finger two, finger three, or it could be finger two, finger three, finger four, or you know, some people use their first finger and then they bar the two. You know, there's so many ways, and the best way to, um, best fingers to use for your left hand on a chord have so much to do with the context of where you're coming from and where you're going to in the piece and, and when you should put those those notes down um, in a piece of music. So, you know, that's stuff that's great to talk about, but I don't want to lock it into a chord shape. So it's much better to think of the theory of the chord tone numbers. So what's going on with the theory of the chord tone numbers? Um, again, the root is the root, and then the number is the distance that it is away from the root. Let me grab a different pen there the distance that is away from the root. So if you played a scale from here and then landed on this note, it would be five notes away in the scale, okay? Also, this is so useful because you can really see clearly, oh, these are the same note. This is a root and this is a root. So that's really nice. This um, not only is great for mapping out the fretboard, obviously super good for mapping out the fretboard, but you can start to listen for like, is that the same note? Oh, yes, it's an octave away but it's the same note. And so the ear training aspect of it is very powerful if you choose to listen for, oh, this is one, this is five. Oh, that's the sound of a root to a fifth or a one to five or a fifth interval. And it will always be the sound of a fifth interval anywhere you play, even if you move it around, um, right? So if I look at this G sharp minor over here and you look at the root of G sharp minor, same sound, moved out to a different note. Um, but if you, um, you know, I'm not talking about a specific extra, a specific exercise for doing that yet, but you could focus on that and just say, what does that sound like? You know, here's the root, here's the third. That's the, that's the root and that's the third of this chord. That's the sound of it. And that will always be the sound of the root and the third. Yes, there's an octave in between them, but that third will always sound um, like that. What it sounds like is ba ba ba. sounds like three notes away from the root. So I just played three, two, one. Um, and that's how I hear, you know, you kind of, you could just hear it kind of jumping there. But internally, a lot of people will hear that in between note in their mind as <laughs> I made a smiley face. Yay, chord chart. Um, a lot of people will hear that, that the in between notes kind of traveling to um, the traveling the distance that they're trying to hear, the interval that they're trying to hear. So um, you'll see relationships. I mean, this is a long game thing, right? It's not gonna happen overnight, but with this chord chart, you can start to see. Um, and if you find that useful, um, just little by little kind of studying what what the heck is going on in this, in this uh, chord, you know, what is there? So root to flat three, that's really useful. Well, check this out. If we know that stuff, we already know that this shape and this shape are the same, obviously, we see that. So anywhere on the guitar, that's always gonna be root to flat three, always, unless you're in a different tuning, right? Sixth string to third string, same fret, that is a, if that's the root, then that's flat three. Um, and so again, what that means is if you played a scale from here to here, then you would get to that note by playing a whole step and then a half step, or it would take you a minor third distance it would take you three notes because it's a third, but that third would be flat. So it would sound like this, G sharp. And I'm gonna play a scale. And I've talked about this a ton in my music theory series. So if you're, if you're curious about this skill, it is so clearly explained in the first, um, well, in like the second and third video of the music theory series that I linked to in the description. It's so, it's such a crucial thing to be able to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three flat three, right? And that's actually different than I usually teach it. I usually say count with a major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Oh, it's a flat three, right? So if that's confusing, that's stuff that I explained really well in those other videos. But, um, you know, just to getting excited about showing you, yeah, those chord tone numbers are all here. So, you know, we're gonna talk next about what the heck is going on with all these other chord options and, and how awesome that is. But that's why it's great that it shows this stuff too. What does F sus two, F sharp sus two even mean? Well, it has a root, it has a fifth, it has a root again here, and then it has a two. The fact that the root is doubled doesn't mean anything, doesn't change the chord, but um, it shows, oh, sus two, what is sus two? I did a video on sus chords actually in that series too. Um, but we see, okay, we have a root, a fifth, and a two in all those chords in all the chords of, of this category here of sus2, in that row of sus2. So any of these other chords, you know, what does major nine mean? 
Um, not only is that a chord shape for it, you know, not only is that the shape to use if you want to play um, E major 9, but now we see, oh, well, E major 9 has a root, a third, a 7, and a 9. It also does have a 5. Don't sweat about that, but it at least shows, and, and it's fine to not play that, but it at least shows you what's in there. Here's one that has, you know, if it's a minor 9 chord, this is everything, root, and then there's a flat 3, there's a 5, there's a flat 7, and there's a 9. So the spelling of these chords is a big, big thing to understand if you want to kind of understand how to create all different kinds of chords. So the chord tone numbers, um, just huge to understand, just huge to understand. And then, you know, if you do understand that stuff, you can make your own chord shapes because you can count around and, and say, well, what's another way to play A if I don't want to play this exact shape? you can use some of that music theory knowledge and chord tones to, to create another shape for it. One more little thing about being able to see the chord tone numbers, I'll just grab um, like the C sharp minor chord here. Um, one more thing about that, and that's that if you want to, actually let's grab a, let's grab a seventh chord because it gives us more stuff to play around with. So we're gonna do, um, sure, why not? C sharp minor nine. So. Um, it, one other thing, by knowing this, um, if you did want to add other notes to play around with uh, maybe uh, adding a melody that works over this or improvising or something like that, actually a pretty cool thing to be able to do, or that that really works, is that you can kind of fill in a scale around it by, by placing notes that are nearby. And you can just use your ear. There's kind of not a right or wrong way to do it. That Whatever you use technically comes from a different mode or a different scale or has a different theory explanation, but there's not really a wrong thing to do, you know? So if you added this note here, it would be uh, it would be the six. Um, if you added, this note here is actually just the root, right? So um, that's the same note as there, even though it's not part of this chord shape, um, it's there. So you can think, of, that's why thinking of the numbers is so helpful. How would you know that? Um, certainly you could find it by ear, but how would you know that if you weren't thinking, okay, nine, which is the same as two, and anything I say theory-wise that's confusing here, go check out that theory series. Um, everything's in there, everything you need to know. Um, so one to two, um, we'll know that you know much more quickly if we can um, think of the numbers. So therefore, if this is flat three, and if we know our structure of our, of our major scale where the normal three is here, well, four is there, right? So if you want it to fill in some of these notes, and then like, we see that flat seven's here. Well, again, if we know our structure of our scale, we know seven is right below the root, and then therefore flat seven is here. Those are the same notes as each other. So now we have some notes that we can play around with um, and fill in. I didn't complete a scale, but that doesn't matter. Root, flat seven, root, flat seven, major seven, root. I played just the note in between those two right there. So root, flat seven, major seven, root, flat three, four. Here's that flat seven, six, flat seven, one, do 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 nine, do 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 Okay, so I don't want that to seem, you know, too overwhelming to you because I'm just like now just playing around with it a bunch because these things take time. But if you did want to start filling in other numbers, again, don't worry about what scale it comes from or anything like that. You can just start exploring. So if that's six, well, that's flat six. Um, and if that's flat six, then five is here right? Um, and these all have sounds that remain, you know, always the flat seven, always playing, oops, let me get back my pen, always playing flat seven to six to five is going to sound the same way. That's what ear training is. That's what ear training is, is, is understanding, ooh, that sounds like the natural six, whether you call it that or not. Um, that's how we recognize things by ear. So, um, so again, if, if that sounds interesting to you, but that sounds like a lot, just know that knowing the structure of the major scale is the foundation of all of that stuff. If you understand the structure of the major scale really well, and then understand uh, just like, oh, if you the three is in a major scale, and if you go down a half step, it's flat three. That's, that's all you need to do that. Really, it'll seem really obvious once you know that. So if you don't know that, check out episodes two and three of that music theory series. So that's it for talking about the chord tones. Let's go on to the next topic. Okay, the absolute coolest part of this chord chart um, and really why it's called Chords with Color and why it looks so hectic. You know, all the stuff we talked about so far could have been a simple chart with just these kind of main chords, but the interchangeable chord options that add color. Now, color tones are um, extensions. Extensions are sometimes referred to as color tones. I'm gonna jump to a different page here. Um, 
So an extension is something like nine. I have videos thoroughly explaining how all that works um, in that series. So you can just kind of search, search for that and find that. I've, I have several um, that really, if you want to get it down. So seven could be considered an extension or not. Um, usually an extension is something above seven. So nine, 11, 13. So um, don't sweat about the theory of that right now as much as just, let's just look at this at the most basic level and just say, um, the point of this is that if you are playing any of these chords or, or that's in a song, right? You're playing any of those chords and you have an understanding of, of like, okay, this chord is the four of that key in any, any key, any context. If you're like this, okay, I'm playing the four chord right now. Um, well, if we go through and over here, I have triad, then sus two, then sus four. What I've done is I said for each chord in the key, the one chord, two chord, three chord, what is it as a triad? What is it as sus two? What if you make each chord? What if you make the one chord sus two? You get that. What if you make the two chord sus two? You get that. Um, and it goes through um, each uh, or many chord types, as many kind of chord variations that I could think of. Um, and it just means that it doesn't work. Adding sus two does not work with the three chord. Don't worry about why for now, but it just can't exist in that key in that way. Certainly E sus2, the chord exists, but not in this key. So when there's an N, a not applicable kind of grayed out box, it just means that chord type doesn't exist. But look at that, you can make the one chord sus2 or the two chord sus2 or the four chord sus2 or the five chord sus2 or like super cool. So like that A sus2, that's what that sound is right there, right? So in some ways this could be kind of an encyclopedia chord thing where you, if you wanna know kind of a chord type, you could find it in here. That's not really what it's meant for, but you can definitely use it that way. You can also use it by just pulling up the screen and just, you could jump to any chord from any chord and it's gonna sound freaking awesome. Um, and use that for just kind of being creative and, and making songs out of it. So yes, I do talk about understanding theory as part of this, but you don't need to know any of that. And there's no reason that you should or shouldn't. It's only if you're curious about it and it excites you and stuff like that. So don't, everyone has their own path, right? Some people don't bother with theory at all. They just get hands on, just use their ear and just play. I think it's all great. I think it's all great. Obviously, whoops, obviously I like that stuff, but um, I'm not saying it's, it's better or worse or should. I, I talk about how it's powerful to know, but if, if you're not interested in it, then it's not gonna be that, that useful. But what if you make sus4, you know, any any of the chords, one chord, two chord, if you make them add nine, an add nine chord, if you make them a six chord, you know, what chords in the key can you turn into a six chord? What chords through the key can you just turn into a seven chord? So now we have all the seven chords through the key. That alone is really handy. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor seven, just kind of looking at that, F major seven, G dominant seven, um, a minor seven, B half diminished, or minor seven flat five. So those are all those shapes. And that alone is just a great exercise too. Hey, what if I play through uh, in order back and forth all those chords? You can create your own exercises with this chart by even just going through and say, I'm gonna play through up and down everything that is seven. Now I'm gonna go through and play up and down everything that is um, major nine. So, oh, gorgeous sound major nine. It says C major nine. Okay, here's, here's the D minor nine. Ah, oh, lovely. Here's F major nine, because I skipped the three there. Okay, um, here's kind of an open string uh, version of G add nine. Not a common chord shape you'd find, but it's because I'm trying to include some open strings where I can. Oh, one of my favorite voicings ever is this A minor nine shape. That's actually really hard. You can see my hand position kind of reaching for it. Uh, totally doable. It just takes maybe some flexibility. Uh, takes some time to get the dexterity or the, the, the technique reach for that, but oh. Just a gorgeous chord. So, um, so back to kind of practically using this, and I guess I'll just show you know what's a six nine chord adds the six and the nine. If you turn them into an eleven chord, if you turn them into thirteen, um, just going through any of those options is great. But back to kind of this. We're, right now we're looking at the row kind of view, uh, left to right, all those chord types. But what if we're looking at the column view, and you have an A minor chord, and you know it's the six of the key? Well, then. You can turn it into this. It's not going to interrupt the music at all. It's, it's going to add, you know, a little bit of spice to it, a little flavor to it. But it's not going to interfere with the functionality of the music. Nothing's going to sound weird about it. It's just going to add more texture. So you have all those options really interchangeable, right? Look at this A minor 11 chord. Oh my gosh, this is such a beautiful chord. 
one of my favorites ever. Just straight up that voicing, one of my favorites, right? You get, you have a whole step between these notes and a whole step between these notes. So you get these, these stepwise um, distances in the chord, which is less common on, on guitar than it is on something like um, piano or in uh, orchestras. Um, so if you just have a normal A minor chord, and you know you're, and you know it's the six of the key, then you can play that minor eleven chord we just played instead, or this, or this. And you know, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you might be uh, familiar with some of this because I am always talking about, you know, getting this chord chart. But I've never done a walkthrough of it like this, so really wanted to just emphasize it um, in this way. Okay, and lastly, I got this bonus page that I, the latest version, I just added this into the sheet and it shows 20 common chord progressions uh, using the theory kind of Roman numeral versions so you can do it in any key, right? So I actually did a whole mini series on each of these. I did a video on the common, on these uh, chord progressions. I did a video on these three chord chord progressions, you know, four part video on, on all of these progressions, giving examples, uh, playing them. So I don't need to do that here. I'll put a link in the description to that series of the common chord progressions. But of course that prompted me to say, there should be a resource where this is just written out as a list so you can play with it and no better place to put it than this chord chart. Because now if you wanted to play um, this progression here, two, five, one, uh, with those seven chords, um, you have, you can just go um, look at, okay, the two chord as minor seven, because you have all of those options, as minor seven, as dominant seven, as major seven, um, through any of those five keys, and you're gonna have the shapes to do that. Um, as well, you can, I talk about this here with a little note, you can, you know, take a normal, normal chord progression, like this absolutely most ubiquitous chord progression ever, um, one, five, six, four, and then look at, oh, how do I make that more my own? How do I make that more um, interesting to me right now? Or, you know, whatever you want to hear, add sevens to it, add nines to it, make it sus, you know, do, do whatever you want because you have all of those here. You look at, oh, well, the one chord of any of those keys, the five chord of any of those keys, and then all their options. So anyway, I think that this is, this is a cool thing totally of its own, but I added it onto the chord chart just so everything is in one place and just wanted to kind of let you know that that is there. If you downloaded a version of this score chart before um, and don't have this bonus page on it because I updated that recently, I sent, I would have sent you an email that sends you the updated version of it. So check your email and just search for chords with color um, or chords with color update uh, and you should have that there. If you don't, just send me an email, um, jared at soundguitarlessons.com, that's totally fine. Um, because if you, do the normal, if you use the link to try to get it again, the thing that sends it doesn't send the same thing twice to people, unfortunately, so. So that's it, that's my walkthrough of my free guitar chord chart PDF. Hope you find it useful, of course. Like I said, you can just use the link in the description to grab a totally free copy of that. Let me know if you have feedback, questions, you know, anytime, totally fine. You can just reply to the email that gets sent to you when you get the uh, PDF, when you get the chord chart. I put out a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is going to be about how I wrote and recorded guitar parts for Macklemore a few years ago. So I'm going to tell a story about that and I'm going to teach the guitar parts that I wrote and that they used on the record. So that's going to be a unique, uh, fun lesson. Hope to see you there. Make sure you're subscribed to check it out. See you next week. Take care and happy practicing.